Hello, my Paraholic friends. I am Loida, the creator of loveacrylicpainting.com and enchantingfineart.com. Today, we are going to be doing a wand. So I've already started the process here, but I wanted to film um, the steps of what I do so that if you guys want to make one yourselves for this upcoming a Harry Potter movie, The Fantastic Beasts and The Secrets of Dumbledore. That would be an awesome thing to do for, um, you know, for that movie. So anyways, what you're going to need is uh, some wooden round dowels. I found these at Walmart. These are three eighths of an inch, but you can also use the ones that are one fourth of an inch. Don't use the ones that are 3 16 because uh, those are way too, uh, too thin. And probably don't use anything bigger than 3 8 because that is going to be too thick. So um, you will also need some hot glue and a glue gun, of course, and um, some wire. This one is copper wire, also found it at Walmart. And then if you do want to add a gem on top, then, you know, something uh, that you can add, you need to find like a, you know, some sort of gem, like a rock or preferably uh, something that has uh, holes. So this one was from a necklace that was broken. So I just decided to use one of these pieces as, you know, my uh, gem on top. Um, this one has hole up here and down here. There are other ones that have like a hole just, you know, down here. Those would be the best ones to use. But again, um, you can make other types of gems work. So this one, you will see the wire on the back. I don't really care. I was thinking of making like a little knot on the top. That way the wire didn't have to go all, all the way to, you know, didn't have to show on the back, but um, I don't really mind the wire showing there. Plus, um, I could always color the wire so that it kind of blends in. And I thought it would be more secure doing it that way rather than just like uh, attaching the, um, the wire to the wood if it came from the bottom. So all I did was uh, put this wire through the gem, brought it through the back, and then just twisted it around until it fell, you know, really secure. Now, I am going to add some hot glue there and then stick this right there to just make it a little bit more stable. adding more glue all around the base of this wooden stick. So my idea here is to add some glue to the top so that it's a little bit thicker up here and then it kind of uh, narrows as it goes down and then maybe add some design. So um, it's the first time I've done this. I saw a tutorial by someone who did a wand like this with this method. Um, I can't remember the girl that did it. I'm gonna mention her right here on the screen if I remember who it was. I'm going to paint my wand. I could have spray painted this uh, with a black paint first, but I don't have spray paint. So I'm just gonna use this Artist Loft black paint uh, as my 
base coat and then I'm going to add some highlights with this rich auburn and Mayan gold from a Prism Pour from Color Art. I wanted this to be to have a very dark background and then so I wanted the grooves to have this dark background and then the top is where I wanted the the metallic highlights. However, you know this would have been accomplished a lot better with a spray paint so that I could get inside all of those tiny grooves, but I don't have any, I don't want to go to the store, so I'm just going to use what I have. It's going to take longer, but I think this is going to work. Just need to make sure that I dab it in there in those grooves. Rich Arbor in there and Mayan Gold and I'm going to add a little bit of that and just kind of brush it on like that. So this is just going to be on the surface. Uh, probably should have waited a little bit but you guys know I'm impatient and my black, black paint is still not completely dry so some of my black paint is mixing with my rich auburn but I guess it's fine because that could cause some blending and that way it doesn't look like you know some areas look like the auburn is mixed in with the with the black and some other areas it's more bright so i guess that's okay the coloring part because I still have one more thing that I want to do so my idea here okay the next step is I want to make this tip look look like it's glowing or at least you know on in the dark because it's not gonna glow during the day but at least like if I turn off the light I want this tip to look like it's glowing so you guys know I love glow powder in the dark powder so that's what I'm gonna do and I'm going to color that tip with some of this uh, glow in the dark powder by uh, techno glow products and I just mix that with some of my regular triart liquid glass um, and I have that mixture here and I'm just going to paint that tip with this mixture. I don't know how it's going to look because, you know, this color is obviously different than that and I don't know if it's going to look good or not. Uh, if it doesn't look good, I'm just going to color over it um, and then just not make it glow. what I mean by having it look a little weird because it's not gonna dry clear you know it's just it's gonna look like it's white so I don't know if that's gonna look weird on my wand should I mix in a little bit of the 
Now the mica powder is going to, to remove some of that glow-in-the-dark properties. I don't know. Do you guys think it looks weird? You know what? I did want to add some glitter to this. I just don't know what glitter. Maybe like a golden one. Hold on. I'm going to sprinkle some of my halo powder. Um, gosh, I don't know if I like that. I wanted it to look sparkly, and then at the same time, maybe my tip would look sparkly if I added this. And maybe that would help also, you know, kind of make it blend with the rest. But I don't know if I like the glitter on this, actually. Maybe it wasn't such a great idea. <laughs> and if it's too sparkly, I can always add some more paint on top. Mm -hmm. 